unraveling the century-long conflict, origins, endings, and lingering mysteries of the Hundred Years' War. The One Hundred Years' War, a monumental conflict that spanned from 1337 to 1453, profoundly shaped the course of European history. This century-long battle involved a series of engagements between England and France, influencing political boundaries, national identities, and military tactics for generations. The roots of the conflict trace back to deep-seated rivalries and claims over territories and rights. Tensions escalated when disputes over feudal allegiances and rights to the French throne became intertwined, setting the stage for a prolonged period of warfare. Central to the onset of hostilities was the rivalry between Edward III of England and Philip VI of France. Edward's claim to the French throne, through his mother Isabella, directly challenged the legitimacy of Philip VI, sparking the initial flames of war. The early battles of the conflict saw surprising victories for the English forces. Utilizing superior military tactics and innovations, the English achieved significant triumphs in the 1340s, setting a precedent for future engagements and altering the course of the war. Amidst the ongoing conflict, the Black Death arrived, wreaking havoc across Europe. This devastating plague temporarily halted military campaigns, reducing the army's effectiveness and dramatically impacting the societal structure of both warring nations. The introduction of the longbow by the English army marked a significant shift in medieval warfare. Its long range and rapid rate of fire gave English archers a formidable advantage, allowing them to decimate French forces from a distance during battles. One of the most pivotal confrontations where the longbow was utilized effectively was the Battle of Crecy in 1346. This battle demonstrated the devastating impact of the English longbow, as French knights, weighed down by heavy armor, were unable to close the distance under relentless volleys. The rise of Edward, the Black Prince, added a new dimension to the English campaign in France. His tactical genius and chivalrous conduct won him admiration and fear alike, bolstering English morale and prestige across the European theater. Despite intermittent truces, peace efforts between England and France frequently collapsed, plunging the regions into further conflict. These breakdowns were often due to deep-seated mistrust and strategic betrayals, highlighting the fragile nature of agreements made during this tumultuous period. The war's ferocity reignited in the 1350s as both nations struggled for dominance. With fresh strategies and renewed vigor, the conflict escalated, setting the stage for more decisive battles that would shape the course of the war. The Battle of Poitiers in 1356 was a significant turning point in the Hundred Years' War. English forces captured the French King John II, dramatically shifting the power balance. This event not only embarrassed France, but also set the stage for substantial ransoms and treaties. Following this victory, England and France signed the Treaty of Bretigny in 1360. The treaty temporarily eased hostilities, granting large territories in France to England. However, its impact went beyond mere land distribution, setting a precedent for future negotiations and altering feudal loyalties. Amidst external conflicts, France faced dire internal strife. The disunity within the country was exacerbated by the war, leading to civil wars and power struggles. These internal conflicts severely undermined France's ability to mount a unified defense against England. During this period, powerful women began to emerge as significant figures in the war. Philippa of Hainaut, the queen consort of Edward III, was known for her political influence and diplomatic skills, which she utilized to support England's military campaigns. Joan of Arc, a young peasant girl, rose to prominence by claiming divine guidance to support Charles VII and expel the English from France. Her leadership during the Siege of Orléans in 1429 revitalized French resistance and marked a turning point in restoring French morale and fortunes in the war. The Siege of Orléans in 1429 marked a pivotal moment in the 100 Years' War. Under the leadership of Joan of Arc, French morale was significantly boosted. Her inspirational presence and strategic insight led to a crucial victory against the English besiegers. Following the siege, Charles the Wets VII was officially crowned at Reims, signaling a major shift in the war's momentum. This event not only solidified French resolve, but also marked the beginning of a decline in English territorial ambitions in France. As the war progressed, 
the nature of the conflict shifted from outright battlefield engagements to more political and diplomatic maneuvers. Both nations began to explore more sustainable solutions to their long-standing feud, leading to intricate negotiations. The Treaty of Picigny in 1475 finally brought the prolonged conflict to a close. This agreement not only ended hostilities, but also arranged for a perpetual peace, which, though not entirely stable, lasted for many years. The 100 Years' War profoundly reshaped national identities in both England and France. It fostered a sense of nationalism and altered political landscapes, setting the stage for modern state formation in both countries. The war's legacy continues to influence European history to this day. The 100 Years' War persisted for over a century due to a complex web of political ambitions, territorial disputes, and familial claims to power. This prolonged conflict was fueled by the fluctuating fortunes of war and intermittent periods of peace, which often unraveled due to deep-seated mistrust and renewed hostilities. The enduring legacy of the 100 Years' War is profound, influencing the national identities and political landscapes of both England and France. The war catalyzed changes in military tactics and statecraft and left a cultural imprint that shaped nationalism in each country. Reflecting on this tumultuous period, it becomes clear that the 100 Years' War was more than a series of battles. It was a crucible for the formation of modern Europe. The lessons it teaches about resilience, strategy, and the costs of prolonged conflict continue to resonate today.